In this video, we're going to go over a few things that are tricky when it comes to trig question papers. Okay, we're looking at high school trig question papers. So the first thing when it comes to your trigonometry being tricky is that you have to know all of your trig before you can even start doing your questions. That includes all the things like all of your reduction angles. If you do not know all your reduction angles, you're going to have problems. Then you need to know all of your co-ratios. If you don't know all the co-ratios, you're going to have problems. You need to know all of your identities. Okay, if you don't know your identities, you're going to have problems. You need to know your negative angles. And again, if you don't know those, problems. And last but not least, your basic ratios. If you know all of those, you know that you're on a good footing for starting a trigonometry paper. Okay, but if you don't, yeah, you're already going to be starting on the back foot. Then a few tricks for those tricky papers. If in doubt, change tan to sine over cos. Okay, so we know that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. Okay, and that is a common identity you're supposed to know. And if you ever get stuck with an equation or with a identity, one of the easiest things to do to help you along is to change all of your tan thetas into sine theta over cos theta. That normally helps. Okay, but what that normally creates is something else that's a bit tricky when it comes to trig, and that is knowing how to combine fractions. Okay, so if you do change something into sine theta of a cos theta, and let's say, for example, that it's combined with a 1, okay, so let's just say we've got 1 plus sine theta of a cos theta, you must know how to be able to combine that, especially for a trig identity. Okay, so if you have to combine those, you need to remember that 1 can be written as cos theta over cos theta. And the reason why we're picking cos theta is because that fraction has a denominator of cos theta. Because now what happens is you can see that your denominators are now the same. And because your denominators are the same, you can combine those fractions. You can add them together. And to add them together, you simply add the top, your numerators together, and of course you've got a common denominator. That little skill there, when using this, is extremely, extremely important, especially for your trig identities. Otherwise, you're going to find that they're going to be really tricky. Okay, One of the other examples of that, which sometimes catches you out, is when you've got, for example, um, two fractions which have got different brackets. So let's say we've got sine theta over sine plus 1 minus cos theta over, let's say, cos theta minus 1. And you had to go and combine those two fractions. Again, you've got to make sure that you go and create a common denominator. And to do that, of course, we have to say, okay, what do both of these denominators have? We have to multiply those together to get a common denominator. So if we multiply the denominators, our denominator, when we combine the fractions, sorry, I've left out a theta there. <coughs> when we combine those fractions, that'll be sine theta plus 1 multiplied by cos theta plus 1 as a denominator. And then we just got to say, okay, what do we have to multiply the denominator by here to get to this combined denominator? We had to multiply it by cos theta plus 1, so we've got to multiply the top there by cos theta plus 1. So that'll be sine theta multiplied by cos theta plus 1. Then, minus, don't forget the minus sign. Over here, what did we have to multiply this by to get this denominator? Okay, we had to multiply it by sine theta plus 1. So that will be cos theta then multiplied by sine theta plus 1. Okay, so that's now combined those two fractions. So those two 
Very, very important, being able to combine fractions, especially if you're going to be changing tan theta into sine theta over cos theta. But all of that is really important for your identities. If you don't know how to do that, you're going to be stuck with some really tricky trig. Okay, then another little thing which is really helpful when it comes to trigonometry is to not forget that when we write out uh, compound angles, we don't normally put theta first and then the known angle. That is the wrong way around. All of your co-functions you should know. For example, a sine of 180 degrees minus theta, okay, or the cos of 180 degrees plus theta, or for example, the tan of 360 degrees minus theta. You'll notice the pattern here that each time you've got the known angle and then your unknown angle. Yeah, it's always in that order. So when you spot something like this, where the unknown angle is written first, you know that that's got to be switched. Yeah, it's a very, very common they like throwing, thing that they like throwing into papers. You've got to switch those two around. Now you've got to be very careful when you do that switch around. So this is your best way of doing that. Okay, that'll be equal to, first of all, open up a big bracket. To switch these around, we're going to take out minus 1, which then gives us minus theta plus 360 degrees. Close our, both of our brackets. Okay, this is a step that you can normally skip out when you get used to doing this. Okay, but now... What we want to do, keep the big bracket, leave them, well, we don't write one, okay, we just write the negative. Open up that bracket again and now switch these two around so that it looks like this, the way that we're normally used to writing it. So that'll be just be 360 degrees minus theta. Close our big bracket. Now this negative over here, remember we've got rules with regards to negative angles. We said that at the start, we've got to know that all, know your negative angles. Okay, so if we go in here, if we take the sine of any negative angle, we should know that that is equal to negative sine of the angle. Then we've got a reduction angle, okay, and we know here that that is in quadrant four, which means that is where sine is negative, so it's a double negative, which leaves us with just sine of theta. Most important thing to note here, as soon as you spot a theta sitting in front over there, you know that you're going to have to switch this boy key around. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck again with some tricky trick. Then, a few other pointers. Remember that when it comes to cofunctions, this is the odd one out. When you've got cos of 90 degrees plus theta, all of your other ones are just a straight change. This one is the one which is equal to negative sine of theta. All the other ones are positive. That one is the odd one out, which is equal to negative sine of theta. Then another one thing that is sometimes tricky, don't forget that your 1 minus cos squared theta, okay, which is for one of your identities, can also be used as a difference between two squares, which of course is broken up into two brackets 1 minus cos squared theta and 1 plus cos squared theta. Very handy to remember when you're struggling with an identity or an equation. Then, last but not least, another thing that you need to remember is if you ever spot a 2 sine theta cos theta in an equation or in an identity, and there's a 1 lurking nearby, you need to notice that that over there is normally the middle term of a trinomial. And that that one can be changed into sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, which is another identity that you need to know. So what happens there is that'll be equal to sine squared theta plus cos squared theta plus then our two sine theta cos theta. And of course, that you need to know, of course, is equal to one, so we can do that. And then if you rearrange all of this, you will see that you land up with sine squared theta. This is your middle term, plus two sine theta cos theta, okay, plus then your cos squared theta on the end. 
you now have a trinomial, which you can factorize, which is really handy if you're getting stuck with an equation or an identity. And that, of course, factorizes into two brackets with a sine theta plus cos theta and another sine theta plus cos theta. Okay, so that's a whole bunch of things which you need to know to make sure that your trigonometry is not as tricky when it comes to handling those exam papers.